respected senior members amongst august audience dear friends and colleagues greetings of the day at the outset i want to put on record my sincere thanks and gratitude to scientific committee of eurotech 22 to have given me this opportunity i want to bring you greetings from india i will be discussing with you the intricacies of pcnl in horseshoe kidney in prone position i have no potential conflict of interest to report horseshoe kidney is the most common fusion anomaly with an incidence of approximately 1 in 400 live births and 15 to 20% of these horseshoe kidneys will have renal stones because the renal pelvis is elongated and anteriorly located upj has a high insertion and the proximal ureter courses more anteriorly than usual to cross over the isthmus collectively these changes are thought to impede normal urinary drainage and they promote urinary stasis and renal stone formation most commonly the stones in horseshoe kidneys are located in the renal pelvis and the posterior lower calices in normal kidneys normally located kidneys they are on both the sides of the vertebral body but horseshoe kidneys the lower poles and the lower calices they and the isthmus it extends anteriorly obliquely and it crosses over the vertebral body anterior to the great vessels in most of the cases very rarely the isthmus will be located posterior to the great vessels so these are elongated kidneys to a great extent anatomical considerations and their clinical implications as regards to pcnl for horseshoe kidneys if we discuss that and we know that the stones are located in the lower poles of the horseshoe kidney and we have to reach with the nephroscope up to the stone so to the skin to stone distance increases tremendously and therefore when we are dealing with the horseshoe kidneys particularly in obese individuals we have to have very long instruments we have to have a long emplat sheet and the long nephroscope before the turn of century the year 2000 there were no long nephroscopes available and i was using a long ureteroscope which was a 10 french ureteroscope being used for anti grade ureteroscopy in normal situations was being used for pcnl in horseshoe kidneys so you should have longer instruments available when you are dealing with this and once your rigid nephroscope has reached up to the lower pole you can still approach the anterior portions of the lower pole anterior calices of the lower pole and with the same nephroscope it is possible that you will be able to remove the stones but if the stones are located in the posterior calices of the lower pole it becomes almost impossible to reach in these calices with the long nephroscope and you have to have flexible nephroscope to reach into these see if the stone is located in this calyx which is the posterior calyx of the lower pole it is impossible to reach up to this stone unless you have a flexible nephroscope making a track may be difficult but it will be challenging to make a track directly through the paraspinous musculature up to this if this calyx is not located more medially over this or not just anterior to the spine to the transverse process of the spine even puncturing this for using the saline push technique will be difficult and it will be very challenging so you must have to have flexible nephroscope ready and that will only come to the rescue in such cases discussing about the vascular anatomy of the horseshoe kidney it is very variable vasculature although graves had described six patterns of blood supply single vessel 
or two vessels on each side or even three vessels on each side sometimes there will be a additional blood supply arising from the aorta and going to the isthmus and lower poles or there may be blood supply originating from external iliac arteries separately all these patterns and many more are possible and if it is possible to have the renal angiography reports or the films beforehand before doing pcnl it will be advisable to have it fortunately all these vessels and their branches they fan out onto the anterior surface of the horseshoe kidney while we are approaching the uh, this horseshoe kidney in prone position from the posterior aspect and therefore there has not been much reported incidences of increased blood transfusion rates or increased uh, bleeding during pcnl for horseshoe kidneys but still if you can have the angiography the films available it is better to have with you as regards to the relation of the colon with the horseshoe kidneys in normal situations the colon is in close proximity to the lower poles of the kidney and it may be the hepatic flexure and splenic flexure may be just anterior to the lower poles or it may be going a little posterior lateral and 2% of cases even posterior to the kidney like a retrorenal colon but in horseshoe kidney the middle and lower pole it is extending the lower pole is extending obliquely reaching anteriorly up to cross the renal to cross the vertebral body so a space gets created posterior to that and once there is a space posterior to the kidney there is very likelihood that the colon may migrate may move to this area and it may become retrorenal as in this series of 12 patients the colon was seen posterior to the kidney in five cases almost 40% of the colon in horseshoe kidney were noted to be posterior to the or retrorenal colon and therefore in these cases of horseshoe kidney you have to be extra vigilant when your needle is advancing forward and if you are puncturing the middle or the inferior calicial Uh, group you should be watching the colonic gas shadow the movement of the colonic gas shadow and be careful that you are not going through the colon when you are making the initial puncture the treatment pop, uh, options available for stones in horseshoe kidney are shock wave lithotripsy it can still be used when the stone is less than 1.5 cm in diameter it is less honsfield units which can be easily fragmented and if the stone is located in the renal pelvis upper pole or mid pole stones in the lower pole calices of horseshoe kidney or larger stone should not be subjected to shock wave lithotripsy because as such average stone free rates of horseshoe kidney subjected to shock wave lithotripsy is only 58% 42% chances the stone fragments will not come out so pcnl appears to be the most logical approach for treating stones in horseshoe kidneys wherein stones are removed then and there and there is no need to be dependent on clearing of stone fragments through a system where even free flow of fluid is compromised so when you are planning to do a pcnl in horseshoe kidney it should be the upper pole which should be accessed it is useful it is usually roomy and it is the easiest calyx to puncture hardly ever you will have to go supracostally to puncture the superior calyx of horseshoe kidney and this puncture provides an excellent access to most of the kidney and the upper ureter so we should try to puncture the upper pole upper calyx sometimes you will need to puncture the middle calyx or the lower pole calyces where the stone is mostly located here and they are coming to be far away from the superior calyx and even your long nephroscope may fall short 
सो यू मे हैव टू डू ए मिडिल कैलिशियल और लोअर कैलिशियल पंचर इन हॉर्स शू किडनी बट यू हैव टू बी एक्स्ट्रा विजिलेंट एज यू आर सींग सो मोनी गैस शेडोज ऑफ द कोलन सराउंडिंग दिस एरिया सो वैन यू आर मेकिंग ए पंचर यू हैव टू बी एक्स्ट्रा केयरफुल दैट यू डोंट गो थ्रू द कोलोनिक गैस शेडो डोंट मेक ए ट्रांस कोलोनिक पंचर नाउ दीज पेशेंट शुड बी डन प्रोन और सुपाइन इन माई ओपिनियन there is a very limited area is available in supine pcnl to access the pelvic elliptical system through convex border of the kidney while anatomy of horseshoe kidney is so variable and you may have to reach into the renal pelvis or to where the stone is in line with the infundibulum and your angle of entry may be different in different uh, horseshoe kidneys so much wider area is available in prone pcnl and line in line with the infundibulum we can make a bed uh, puncture if the patient is lying prone we have to remain lateral to the mid scapular line we can make a puncture between 10th and 11th or 11th and 12th rib hardly supracostal punctures will be required for supra for horseshoe kidney but a wide area is available posterior to the posterior axillary line all this area is available and we can make puncture as per our choice as per line with the infundibulum in prone pcnl so i will recommend a prone pcnl in horseshoe kidney so that you can access all the stones moreover the initial entry into a horseshoe kidney is more medial than in normal kidneys and sometimes it may pass even through the paraspinous musculature which is possible only in prone position so coming to take home messages pcnl in prone position is logically the best and safest treatment option for stones in horseshoe kidneys otherwise it may be difficult to remove such a large bulk in the renal pelvis and in the calyces in a horseshoe kidney either you will have to resort to ecirs or pcnl still remains the best choice for good clearance of these stones you must possess long amplat sheath long nephroscope flexible nephroscope for achieving complete clearance and you have to be extra vigilant and careful to avoid colonic injuries in cases of horseshoe kidneys thank you very much for patient listening my thanks and regards for your kind attention at the end i would like to invite all of you to new delhi india on october 1st and 2nd 2022 where we are organizing 9th international live operative workshop dedicated to basic and advanced techniques of pcnl and this conference is called percon 2022 if possible we would like to demonstrate 10 to 12 cases of pcnl and if possible we will do a horseshoe kidney pcnl also thank you very much for listening to me